Tape measure, guys. Here's what we're gonna go. Simple concept tape measure. This is your standard tape measure that what you're gonna have in the shop, phase two. If you have your own tape, make sure there's no cheaters on it. If you don't know what cheaters are, are the ones that has label, the, the inch, the um, eighth, the three sixteenth, all label. Those we don't wanna see in the shop. If you can get one yourself, that's fine. If you can get one, get this kind, the Fat Max. They're a lot thicker, stronger, and plus they come with a razor, an eraser, I mean. Sure. Yeah, on this Fat Max, there's an eraser. If you mark it a table, you can erase with the rubber. See that? A lot of you guys don't know that. Okay. This here is a lot thicker. A lot thicker than the one we give you guys, that we provide you guys. This one's flimsier. That's the only thing difference. Now, if I were gonna pick one, I'd pick the Fat Max. So this right here is your stop. You guys should all know this in first phase, right? I know it's been a while since you guys were in there, but this right here locks the tape measure. Press it down, it locks it up and down. I'll watch your hand, it'll cut your hand. Same thing with this one. It does the same stuff. Now, going over to this tape here, this here, you would not, you'd be using this when you're like squaring off a foundation or something big, landscape, um, excavation. Longer distance. Longer distance, because this goes up to 100 feet. Okay, so Miss H, grab that on there. You can pull it out, it has tape measure on both sides. If you didn't have somebody holding the one end, yeah. There should be a hook. The one end, there is a loop. You can always drive a stake or a nail into the point that you want to measure from. When it's hooked on, it'll give you the measurement. You'll see that this type of tape does not have the sixteenths on it. It only has the eighths. Okay? It's for it's for rough estimate measurements. But then uh, Mr. P could pull it all the way out to what is this one? Hundred feet. feet. So if you're gonna use this, you wouldn't use this like a to square up a foundation, a big house, mm -hmm. okay? Or you're doing an excavation, whatever. But otherwise, you wouldn't be using this much. You wouldn't be carrying this in your pouches. If you want to, go ahead, if you got a big pouch. The biggest thing with these... <clears throat> you're like a kangaroo with a big pouch, because right. it would be insane to have that in your pouch. That's crazy time. The biggest one with these is you got to make sure that when you're reeling it back, you're going in the same direction. Otherwise, you're going to you're gonna twist the tape. So you want to reel it back into the same direction, okay? And then and that locks it down. So the other object is, this here is a pointer. To turn it on, you can press it here, it points it. If it points on that black number right there, the red dot on 93 there, you can press it. If I hit it again, it's gonna give me a measurement for where I'm standing. So from here where I'm standing, it's eight foot six and a half. That's what it says on here. You won't be using this on a site. You'd be using it for your own personal, when you're doing a bid job, like a basement, so you don't want to pull your tape measure. You can just shoot this from one wall to one wall. It don't work that good in the broad daylight. Just FYI. <laughs> but otherwise, this is nice too. This is probably about 50, 60 bucks, 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Couple things to, to point out on the tape measure here, okay? I don't know if Mr. DeBoer explained uh, these items or not, but when you have a tape measure, see how I'm holding the tape? I didn't put my lock down, I just held my finger there to keep it in the position I want. When, you're, when you get your tape measure, you'll see these rivet points. There's three rivet points on this particular tape measure, Stanley. That, give, that is the strongest that you can have so that it holds the blade in place. There is a little bit of flexibility, so you want to make sure that when you, if you're pulling off of a measurement, that that's how you measure it as well. That'll be the most accurate for you. When you get your tape measure, look for any bends in the tape. I don't know if the, if the uh, camera can see that, but there's a little bend in this tape. Eventually, that's going to crack and the tape will be no good to us. Mm -hmm. Right at that point, at that inch point. Okay? If you do have a tear in your tape, just be aware that sooner or later that tape measure is going to break and then it's no longer good to you. So you do want to take care of these tape measures. Um, if you get uh, water on them, 
Make sure that you take a rag and then as you pull it back in that you wipe off your blade, otherwise these can rust. Um, also with dirt, try to keep the dirt off. You'll only increase the life of your tape measure. And then obviously there's the clip on the back to uh, hook onto your belt or hook onto your pants just to keep it free for yourself, okay? I usually put it in the hand that I'm using it. So let's get into the specifics of the tape measure here. We know that the tape measure has the different marks for us. We have the f feet marks that are in the dark arrows. This is the one foot and you have two foot and so on and so forth. You also have the red squares. On this particular tape it's a red square. That is an indicator when you get into framing a lot of our framing members are centered on 16. We'll get into that when we get into um, laying out but the 16 boxes every 16 inches there'll be a red box. There'll be a stud. And that is where a stud or a joist would be. Could be a truss as well. All right, let's go back down to the foot. In one foot, we have 12 inches, okay? And within each of these inch marks, this would be the start. The long line, say we're at the nine inch mark. That's solid. That is the solid line is where the nine inches starts. After that, there is a mark on this particular tape every sixteenth of an inch. So every mark counts on that within that inch. How many sixteenths in an inch? Sixteen. It's a sixteenth of an inch, two sixteenths. Okay? After that, the next one, if you want to go into the eighths, is the next measurement that's larger. Those are the second largest. There's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths. How many eighths in an inch? Eight. Okay. The next measurement up we go into quarters. If you'll notice each measurement that I've said you have a sixteenth, you have an eighth, and now we're going to do quarters. Look at how these numbers are decreasing, okay? Every quarter is a larger measurement. There you go up another slash. One, two, three, four. Those are the quarter inch marks. What's next? Half inch. Larger mark yet. One, two. Two halves in an inch and then obviously you have the, the inch, okay? When a lot of times we wouldn't say two sixteenths, we would say one eighth. Makes more sense. So, one sixteenth, two sixteenth, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sixteenths is what? One half inch, okay? Try to go through that with your own tape measure. Count out the sixteenths, then count out the eighths, the quarters, the halves, and then you have the inch. One more, one more thing I just want to say is when you get down to this inch mark, this within the inch mark, these are hard measurements to see on the tape because the blade is getting in the way. So. If you're told cut an inch, what we do is we bring the tape measure so that it starts right on the inch mark and then it's easier to count up and see those sixteenths. So if you're told to cut an inch, that is what you do. If you're told to cut a foot, which occasionally you may have to, that would be cutting a foot. One more thing. If I say shy or strong, if I said five and three sixteenths strong, that means that I'm asking for it just a little bit over that three sixteenths mark. 
okay? That would be strong. If I said shy, it would be a little less than the 3 16 mark. Okay? Work on that. Let me jump into that. Now, <clears throat> what she was saying about strong and light, if you guys are gonna go into cabinet work, I suggest you guys practice your 16th. You gotta know 16th, because most likely they're gonna use 16th. Don't step any back further. Um, if you're gonna go into framing work, there is rough framing, okay? You can be off a couple 16th, it's not a big deal, but try to be precise. But they don't use a 16th in framing. We don't, say, we don't call out 16th. We call out quarters and eighths. Eighth strong, a quarter strong, quarter light, that means the next line after the quarter. Okay, either light or strong. If you're gonna go into framing, try to understand those numbers. If you're gonna go into cabinet work, trim work, do the 16th, because that's gonna help you out. Because that's all they're gonna call a 16th out. So among the things that we've learned is that some of you already have some pretty good skills with the tape measure. What we're after is everybody to get to the place where you can look at the tape measure and you know immediately what the number is. That you're not counting anymore. You're not going, is that eighths? Is that sixteenths? Is that quarters? So the goal through our 10 weeks together is that you get so good with the tape that you just know. Uh, basketball players, when they start out in grade school, are given a basketball and they take it home and they keep it with them all the time. We're suggesting that your tape measure become like that. That it, for, as a carpenter, you use a tape measure all the time. Practice every day. It's, it clips onto your belt, it, it stays with you, and you just start learning to measure stuff. If you already have good tape measure skills, then work on adding fractions until adding fractions becomes normal. But if you're still struggling to know which is the eighth mark and which is the 16th mark, then daily practice with your tape measure until that becomes second nature. So when it comes to measuring stuff like a door height, I don't want you guys to go on your hands and knees. Stay off your knees if you can, so you can save your, that'll help you out. You always want to bend the tape and measure from the floor if I want to measure to the top of that trim, I go from the, bend my tape like this, and I measure like that. It's going to save your knees, save your joints, whatever. I've been there, done that, okay? You want to make sure you want to measure going up. And the same thing, if I want to measure this, I'll put this up against something, and I'll just point it out to a spot, and I'll just say to my, whatever, here at 81, that's the same thing. I'm not getting on my knees constantly, okay? You can bend down a little bit and measure and look at it. The best thing about this tape here, if you want to find half of, half of like, eight, half like 88 inches, you can put this on 88. For the people who are bad in math, it should be 44 down at the end. You bend the tape down to mark on 88, and if you look down that end, it says 44. For the people who are bad in math. One other thing, um, start getting used to measurements and what you think measurements are. If I say what is 12 inches, you should be able to approximate how much 12 inches is. One key is take your tape and measure your body. Where does it come up to your knees? Oh, that's about two feet. Up to my waistline is three feet. Okay, you see that? So I know now that three feet is about from the floor to my waistline, approximately. Four feet up to my chest. And then five feet, well, we're getting pretty close here. <laughs> right. When we said go grab me a board about two feet long, just understand what two feet looks like. Understand what foot looks like. You know what I'm saying? Know your material is a crucial thing when it comes to construction trade. Okay, that's your one by four, two by four, one by six, two by six. Two by fours are three and a half inches. Two by sixes are five and a half inches. That's nominal measurements. And in case you're wondering, nominal comes from the Latin word nomenclature, and it means the name that we give a thing, right? And what would d d dimensional be? What would dimensional That's be? That's actually the measured size of it, so. Well, yes, but where did that come from? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for having fun with us. And we're out on this video.